Welcome back into Main Street Living. Quick quiz. How many of you loved history in high school? If you said yes, then we have just the program for you. Well, actually, Danielle, I think I would sleep a lot while in class. However, I did hear New Orleans, Louisiana is the home of the National World War II Museum, which hosts a history competition for high schoolers each year. So Colin Makinson is here to tell us all about it. Welcome to Main Street Living, Colin. Oh, thank you both for having me. I'm really excited. No problem. Well, Colin, let's uh, let's start with the National Museum, okay, here, the, well, the National World War II Museum. In fact, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. Uh, uh, and compared to sort of the big national museums, the Smithsonian's of the world, we're, uh, we're sort of a new kid on the block. Uh, and we're also not in New York or D.C. or Chicago or L.A. We're uh, right here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we opened on June 6th, D-Day. Uh, of, uh, of the year 2000, and we opened originally as the D-Day Museum, the National D-Day Museum, to tell the story of one day in the history of World War II, the D-Day landings in Normandy, France. Um, and a few years after that, we received designation by Congress uh, to be the nation's recognized National World War II Museum. So with that, we changed our name. We've also had to expand our mission, our campus, and our programs. We've been growing ever since, and so we had our, uh, uh, you know, our 20th and 21st anniversary uh, just a few years back. So we're ready to go, ready to party. No, oh, we're ready to party with you, but we know that part of that party is that you offer a variety of educational programs at the museum. What can you tell us about those? Sure, we, uh, we uh, have a great six acre physical campus that you can spend you know, all day in, whether you're a teacher, a student, a tourist, a visitor, but we also want to exist beyond the walls of the campus. So a part of my job working in the education department is to make sure assets, artifacts, oral histories, resources uh, are in the hands of, of teachers around the country uh, and students. This is, uh, you know, it's the time it is marching onward. It used to be World War II veterans were all around us. To talk to a veteran was very easy. Um, and that time is rapidly coming to a close. So our mission is, hey, how do we keep World War II and the interest in the subject matter alive uh, as we're 75, 80 years now removed uh, from these events. So that's uh, what we're challenged with, and it is challenging, but it's uh, something uh, I wake up uh, and sort of excited with uh, new ways that we can reach students or teachers uh, with our programs. Yeah, well, that's another thing. That's another thing that a lot of us are excited about, too, is the annual high school quiz bowl, which has been going on for uh, 18 years now. So why host a competition and what is it like? It's it, it's it's challenging for these students. It's more challenging for us to write hard questions because we these, these kids, uh, the great things are working with uh, with school aged uh, students is they will tell you uh, very straight to your face if something is too easy. Uh, and we've had a lot of these teams say, you got to make it harder. you got to make it tougher for us. So we hold a, 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 an annual a quiz bowl uh, of teams of students from schools around the greater New Orleans area, uh, some from uh, neighboring states as well, to come and really sort of test their mettle uh, to what they know uh, about World War II. And it's not just battles, names, places, and dates. We try to make it uh, really sort of expand what World War II is. Because World War II isn't just names, places, dates, and battles. It's social history and cultural history. What was happening on the home front? Um, you know, what was the state of you know race relations and gender roles during World War II? So not yeah. just yeah. deer head stuff that uh, a lot of students are interested in. Uh, so give them a more, you know, a clearer picture, a fuller picture of World War II. But it's it's a challenge every year coming up with find things these kids don't know because they know a lot. You guys are really getting into the nitty gritty of it. Why is it so important for students to be familiar with the history of World War II? I guess because World War II is one of uh, the sort of the last universal experiences. 16 million Americans were volunteered or drafted to uh, to serve in World War II, uh, but there were millions of others serving on the American home front. So everyone uh, had some skin in the game. Um, it's uh, a, a really universal experience where everyone uh, has someone in their family or knows someone in their family uh, who did something during World War II. Maybe not on the battlefield, but uh, back here at home as well. Again, as we get further away from the events of World War II um, and we're, we don't have that living link to connect students and teachers to the events of World War II, you know, how do we keep uh, 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 World War II history uh, in sort of the focus of, the, of these uh, students' very busy curricular and extracurricular um, uh, lives? So a lot of them really like doing quiz bowl, academic decathlon, whatever you want to call it. So we said, hey, let's make a World War II framework around it and see if we can get students to come. And they have been for almost 20 years. Which is pretty exciting, you know, 
But what do you think the students actually get out of this competition besides a better understanding of World War II history? I mean, it's 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 a competition. Uh, it's it's definitely bragging rights. Uh, it's definitely saying that you know your 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 team uh, has uh, has sort of uh, bested the field uh, put out in front of you. Uh, yeah. But no, it's also it's it's also having uh, students who hopefully have a lasting relationship with the where they may not go away being a World War II historian or expert. But they can say, "Hey, I had a really great time uh, at the museum uh, during this event." Well, think of us, and you know, eighteen years down the line, maybe they'll bring you know their kids back for a visit. Makes yeah, sense. Of course. Who doesn't like a quiz? I mean, it's not nerve wracking or anything, but obviously we're big fans of the quiz bowl. In fact, the preliminary round show is running now on your view in Louisiana and Florida. And we'll also be televising the final round, of course, on March 10th. How are the teams preparing? Because like I said, this, this could be a little nerve wracking. In a, in, a, in a variety of ways, you know, they're meeting regularly. Uh, they're, they're really sort of going through uh, different categories with different individuals and in these three person teams responsible for areas of the war or conflict. We put a, up on them. Uh, we try to look for things that maybe they wouldn't think about. I know uh, one of the areas that we can typically mine for good questions is is popular culture, movies and songs from the 1940s. Uh, that typically that's not something that's on these students' radar. So if anyone's who's going to participate in the quiz bowl in the future is watching this, there's a, a free little hint of advice for you. Nice, nice. Well, really quickly before we get out of here, uh, how can viewers find more about the National World War II Museum education programs and the quiz bowl? Yeah, uh, for to find out about all of our programs that we have on site, as well as things going on off site, our distance learning programs. Uh, we have a great partnership with Arizona State University, uh, the American Battle Monuments Commission, really anything that you would want to know that's happening at the World War II Museum. You can visit uh, WW2 National WW2, the number two, not the Roman numeral, museum.org. And that'll be all at your fingertips. Well, we're really excited for the quiz show. Thank you so much to Colin for joining us today. All right. Thank you so much for having me and I uh, look forward to doing this again in the future. That's right. And for our viewers in Louisiana and Florida, don't forget to tune in on March 10th at 8 p.m. to see which team will win the Quiz Bowl Championship. Uh, and if you are not in those markets, the show will be on your view YouTube channel on March 11th. So thank you so much again to Colin. And next up, we're going to be visiting uh, with some next level cancer care. Mm -hmm.